So the last two days we've had two different trucks with two different beds, uh, the hoist stop working for two different reasons. So I just want to show you a few things to check out. Before you ever get under your hoist, make sure your bed is on its bed lock. Otherwise you could really be in an unsafe situation. Um, so this is on a 2021 truck. And as you see here, there is an inline fuse and that goes to your cab remote. So this is big power. Uh, when I say that, that means the, the heavy current that comes through your battery into your hoist um, solenoid. And then this is little power or control power that goes up to your remote. And this fuse was blown. Now whenever you encounter a blown fuse, you have to find out why did it blow. Something always made a blow. So inspect your insulation, make sure there's no nicks or cuts going all the way back to your remote. I pulled off the cover of the remote, that looked fine. Um, but in this situation actually was pretty obvious. This post was corroded so bad that um, when it tried to pull current through this fuse, this fuse, connection was so bad it pulled so much current it popped the fuse. It blew the fuse. So clean this post all up and then I sprayed it with an anti-corrosion coating. Um, and so I uh, really wish that there was weather boots on these. There should be weather boots and also just so nothing arcs. Uh, and when I say that, something metal crosses some of these posts or crosses a post to ground and then, then you'd have an arcing condition. So uh, just give you a few other thoughts here. So big power comes in here, little power goes out to the controller uh, in the cab and then power comes back through the controller and that's going to uh, activate this solenoid which moves power from this post to this post into your electric motor that runs your hoist pump. And then... <clears throat> The next thing electrically that you would look at if you had a problem, you've got these two um, solenoids here that work cartridge valves in in the uh, the pump body. And um, the, the other the other failure we have uh, it was actually one of those coils. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, one of those controls the up motion, and the other one controls the down motion. So that type of pump body is called a double acting. Uh, and that's versus a single acting. In that situation, there is uh, the, the pump would just push the the cylinder into the up position, and then gravity would actually just push the uh, dump body back down. In this situation, it's powered both ways. So um, I'm not sure if it's the same on this hoist. It probably is, but this far solenoid here controls the up motion. This one here controls the down motion. So. Um, just a couple things to check out and this here this isn't proper for being um, outdoor uh, you could use an inline fuse holder like this inside the cab you cannot use that when it's outdoors it's got to be one like this that has a weather boot on it um, otherwise I've seen fuse hole fuses that actually corrode through the posts and down into the spades and they fail that way so uh, this is the type of part that should have been used on this truck and uh, I'm going to replace it here shortly. Just want to give you one more thing to check. This is a pretty common thing that you might find. Um, on some standards, you're going to find a circuit breaker inside your toolbox on the panel here. Uh, some standards I've seen it actually in front of the toolbox and a control box there. Some hybrids have it here on the frame rail. Um, three different locations you might find a 200 amp circuit breaker that may have tripped. And uh, actually we have a 2020 truck that has no circuit breaker at all, which is not not the right way to integrate the hoist but um, check to see if that 200 amp circuit breaker tripped that could be another reason why uh, your truck hoist might not be going up and down all right here's the second truck that had a problem with the hoist and uh, the first truck you push the the button in the cab you heard no sounds nothing moved this truck you push the button in the cab on the remote and you could hear the hoist pump running but it wouldn't lift so um, when you hear that, go and start suspecting that this coil, one of these coils died on, on the two uh, cartridge valves. And so again, um, this one here on this hoist is, is the up and this one is the down. They're the same part number. So what you can do real quick just to figure out what's going wrong, there's a three quarter nut or 19 millimeter on top of here. Loosen that and be careful, uh, you might need to hold the uh, the solenoid 
or put a wrench at the bottom of the cartridge valve because the cartridge valve might want to spin out with that. You just want to loosen just the nut because otherwise you loosen up this whole cartridge, uh, hydraulic oil could come out. Um, if you know, uh, you know, if the system was up, you should always have your body lock in place. But um, you know, if you lose pressure, then the hoist might start moving. So again, keep keep this from moving, but just take off this top nut. Take the solenoid and flip it from the position you think is not working. Then do the opposite of whatever you wanted to do on the remote. So in this case, the body wouldn't go up. I thought this up solenoid was bad. So I moved the down to the up, and then I pressed the down button on the remote, and the hoist went up. So that instantly, I instantly knew that, that this cartridge, uh, this solenoid on this cartridge valve was bad. So, um, these are pretty cheap. Just keep one in your toolbox. Uh, what you're going to look for is, it's kind of hard to focus on the part number, these are a 10 volt, 25 watt. And uh, this one here is a Deltrol, you can get them on Amazon for 35 bucks. Um, the one that came on this pump is a Booker, um, and I'll get that part number, number to you later in the video. Um, so that's a quick way to diagnose that. Uh, Everything else in this is, is the same as the other truck I was just showing you. Uh, here's a little look inside the control box. Now you got a bunch of wires here on a hybrid because um, there's two ports. You got this port here for your remote on the hoist and you got the one on the cab. So there's double the wiring. Uh, now what they did real good here, um, they put all this in an enclosure and then they went a step further. They've got dielectric grease on each one of these terminals. Now they missed it actually on this one here, as you can see it's all rusted. But all these other ones look as if it was brand new and this is a 2017 truck. So little things like that really matter. Um, they use nice heat shrink butt splice connectors here. Um, unfortunately, they didn't here. That's just a standard butt splice and you shouldn't use that in an outdoor environment. So um, that's going to get replaced and of course I had to cut, had to cut the green wire here uh, for that that other coil that was bad, so that's going to get replaced with a weather rated uh, marine um, epoxy sealing butt splice connector. So these hoist systems are pretty simple. There's just a few things that can kind of go wrong. Uh, you know, uh, of course, you can't have a problem with your motor or your pump, but it's probably going to be one of these silly electrical things that's uh, that's uh, goofing you up. So hopefully, that gives you a couple things to check real quick, and uh, hopefully, get yourself out of a jam if, if your hoist gets stuck. Just in case you're interested, this is the product I've been using to uh, coat any of the battery cables or open terminal connections on the truck, and it seems like it's been working pretty good.